We're going to do two awards, and I want to introduce first uh, one of our ambassadors, Britt Ide, who's going to give the Law and Finance Award. Britt is, an, well, first of all, she led a great session yesterday that many of you may have attended. She's an interdisciplinary executive and board director chair with over 20 years of experience as um, an engineer. She works with business and uh, leaders working with startups, Fortune 500 companies, and their boards of directors, so a big spectrum of uh, organizations. So Britt is experienced with technology, regulated industries, energy, intellectual property, and many more things, including climate change mitigation. Um, she is also the president of IDE Law and Strategy, a firm that proactively resolves business disputes and consults on energy policy, strategy, and sustainability. Welcome, Britt. First, I just have to say to you undergrad present presenters, holy cow, amazing. Yeah. So incredibly, so incredibly exciting. So that, that was very inspiring, a little humbling and intimidating too. I am an engineer, but boy, you know, you guys have just knocked it out of the park. So it's really my pleasure to award this Law and Finance Awardee. And this, as you've heard all day today and yesterday, we've created this sector for law and finance because energy is heavily regulated, heavily policy driven, very legal. And then as we heard about entrepreneurs and getting these new technologies out and everything, it's also very finance driven. How do you fund it? How do you do the deals? How do you do the M&A? How do you set up a system that will work? We've talked about all different things. So this is a really neat topic and category to recognize women. And so I'm very excited to, to recognize Alina. And she was born in the Ukraine, grew up in the United States, studied political science and business at the University of California at Berkeley, and then did her law work at Harvard Law. She's worked at big law firms, including one of our sponsors, a shout out to Hogan Levels. And now she is with First Solar. She has her business work, she's done over 10 billion, that's a B, deals, worth of deals on financing in this in the energy space. And then on her volunteer work, she's also started a group for professionals in renewable energy when she was in DC the first time. She's back there now. And she's also done pro bono work for small startups in renewable energy companies that have come along very well. And on a personal note, you have to talk to her at break because she's a mountain climber. She's climbed Mount Kilimanjaro, Mount McKinley, some other ones I can't pronounce. So very impressive woman. So please help join me in recognizing an accomplished woman, Elena Koskoskaya. Thank you all so much for this award. It's a huge honor to be among such accomplished women. And I have to say the undergraduate presentations blew me away as well. <laughs> That's a hard act to follow. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. So I wanted to, um, to really thank uh, Hogan Lovells, um, one of the sponsors here, and especially Mary Ann Sullivan, who nominated me for this award. Um, I started my legal career at Hogan Lovells as an associate and was very fortunate to start working on renewable energy transactions and financings uh, early on in my career. And that really inspired a passion which stayed with me to this day and I hope to continue. And so really, I think there are a lot of challenges and opportunities in law. And one of the most exciting things that I get to do in my career is take the legal challenges and you know, help the business get to, get to a deal, get to a transaction um, that helps you know, build some of these renewable energy assets and make it a reality. So um, First Solar, I've been there for a year and a half now. It's been an incredible adventure. Um, I think solar coaster is the, a good word. <laughs> uh, uh, Seth. Um, so it's, you know, it's really given me the opportunity to work on a diverse uh, range of um, solar transactions uh, from selling a 300 megawatt utility scale solar plant this summer um, to uh, a yield go that we launched as in a joint venture with SunPower in June. Uh, to some of the more sort of exciting and rewarding transactions that we worked on in energy access and um, doing business development in Africa. So one of them is um, an investment that we did in a company out of Berkeley in Powerhive that's right now working to electrify 20,000 uh, villages in Kenya. And 
They were recently mentioned in a White House press release uh, last week. Um, they have a commitment from OPIC, and being part of that transaction and working on things that, like energy access to some of the um, sort of neediest communities around the world is what makes my job sort of exciting and rewarding um, every day. Um, so thank you so much. Very proud to be part of this community of women and hope to contribute um, mentorship and sort of my passion for, for law and clean energy. So thank you so much. <laughs> Our next award is the Entrepreneurship Award, and our ambassador, Ellen Morris, is going to be presenting. Ellen teaches energy and enterprise development at Columbia University's School of International and Public Affairs, and she's also a faculty affiliate at the Center on Global Energy Policy. In addition to her faculty appointment, as if that's not enough, um, she is the president and founder of Sustainable Energy Solutions, an international consulting firm company, I'm sorry, an international consulting, consulting services company that promotes the increased use and deployment of clean energy technologies and services as a means to support economic development and reduce poverty in developing countries. Welcome, Ellen. Hi everyone, it is a thrill and a pleasure for me to give this award to Erica Mackey, uh, the C3E Award for Entrepreneurial Leadership. Uh, Erica is the co-founder and chief operating officer of Off Grid Electric, a company operating in Tanzania, in Rwanda, in East Africa. And Erica is really an inspiration to me and to the world for really showing how it's possible to uh, provide clean energy to people in very difficult situations and uh, extreme poverty in developing countries. And just to give you some context, uh, in the world about 1.4 billion people do not have electricity. In the continent of Africa and more specifically Sub-Saharan Africa, almost half of the people in Sub-Saharan Africa do not have electricity. More specifically in Tanzania, the place that Erica knows so well, about 14% of the people in Tanzania have access to the grid. However, the statistics are much worse in rural areas where it's less than 5% of the people have access to electricity. So Erica, seeing that challenge um, and that difficult situation that people live in day to day, with a keen sense of observation and really listening to people um, saw that people really wanted a modern lifestyle, just as we all enjoy here. And people were also paying a tremendous amount of money for kerosene for lighting, which is very expensive, very poor quality, and very bad for your health. So Erica, in founding Off Grid Electric, has transformed that challenge into a very uh, significant business that provides the whole package, sales, service, logistics, household by household in rural Tanzania and soon to be uh, Rwanda. And more importantly, I think um, she has also shown the investors uh, in the world, impact investors, how that this can be a truly commercial investment. It's not charity, it's a real investment with real returns. And recognizing that um, she has had success in raising several rounds of capital, most recently in October, uh, just closing a $25 million investment, making it the largest venture capital investment in distributed energy in Africa. And it happens to be by a company called DBL Partners that is a venture capital firm that is, was founded 
by one of my fellow ambassadors, Nancy Fund, and she led the way with her investors, which also includes Solar City, which my other fellow ambassador, Seth Weissman, is also involved. So I think um, it's an amazing example. She is inspiring uh, lots of people uh, by really breaking new ground. So please join me in congratulating Erica Mackey for winning the 2015 C3E Entrepreneurial Leadership Award. Erica? Oh, thank you for the very kind words, Ellen, and to the uh, C3E ambassadors. And thank you to Mighty and the DOE for such a great honor. The incredible women that I've met over the last 24 hours have just blown me away. It's a very rare experience living on the other side of the world to be in a room with such incredibly accomplished and uh, generous people. So it's just been a, a, great, a great moment. And at the risk of sounding cheesy, I'm also going to thank my mom, who's in the room. <laughs> uh, <it's laughs> so she's really inspired me to take risks and, and live a life of adventure. And it isn't often that we're under the same roof, um, especially living where I live halfway around the world. And it's also not often that we have three generations of, of Mackie women <laughs> under the same roof. So we're really taking advantage of this. And I'd also like to, to finally thank my team um, across the globe. We have team members, I want to make sure I get this right, team members in Tanzania, Rwanda, Kenya, Nigeria, Russia, uh, China, Thailand, and San Francisco, all working around the clock to ensure that we achieve our insanely ambitious mission, which is to power the off-grid grid world in a decade. We have developed technology and a solar leasing business, business model for a radically affordable solar access for every rooftop in emerging markets. For a monthly price that's almost the same amount as our customers would pay to charge their cell phones and buy a kerosene lantern, we turn the lights on. By the end of this year, we will be powering over 100,000 households across Tanzania. And to support this growth, we've had to build our own state-of-the-art teaching academy just to keep up with training local staff to deploy them out into the field. And over half of the uh, inbound applicants, candidates in the academy are women, I'm proud to say. And thus far, we're now employing a local workforce in East Africa of over 800 full-time clean energy professionals. Uh, we partnered with the Tanzanian government uh, the, at the beginning of this year on an initiative to bring solar energy to one million households in Tanzania. And that's 10% of the population. So when you listen to Ellen's statistics, where only 5% of uh, rural Tanzania has access to the grid now, uh, that's doubling those statistics. Uh, so we have our work cut out for us. We definitely do. And I often get asked, so how did you end up doing this? How did you end up in, in Africa, and, and why are you doing what you're doing? So I thought I'd focus the last few, few minutes here on the rest of uh, on telling a bit about my story. So outside of taking Leslie's advice, which was just trying stuff, uh, as an entrepreneur, I also listened. So living in, in rural Tanzania for the last uh, decade, actually, first I was addressing public health access challenges. And I listened to thousands of people tell me what they thought their biggest frustrations in life were. And for a population that lives on $1 to $2 a day, I was initially a little surprised at what I heard. I thought it would be the lack of the basics, food, water, health, but what it turned out was what Ellen, Ellen mentioned. People kept mentioning, I want a modern lifestyle. They wanted all the things that they, they saw typically, uh, and that they saw others typically receive from government and the private sector. They wanted basic infrastructure, they wanted roads, and specifically, they wanted electricity. So when the sun sets tonight, one out of two Africans will not flip on a light switch. Instead, they will light a wick, combusting kerosene, which is jet fuel, to create a dim, smoky light. A single kerosene lamp in a room has the same health impact as smoking two packets of cigarettes a day, according to the World Bank. And so this means the world's poorest people are paying more than anyone in the West for unhealthy and inefficient energy, while poisoning themselves and by de facto our planet. So more than 100 years after Thomas Edison has invented the light bulb, there's still, we're not sure, 1.3, 1.4, 1.6 billion people around the world without, living without access to electricity. And I don't know about you, but that statistic makes me incredibly angry. 
The continent of Africa is one of the sunniest places on Earth. So if we could find a way to make solar technology accessible to the millions of households living off the electrical grid, then we might have a functional business. And with this, Off Grid Electric was born. Our work in Tanzania is just the beginning, and we're already seeing the fruits of our labor. The availability of affordable solar technology has transformed households by increasing the numbers of hours that children can study, increasing income generation by keeping shops open longer and businessmen able to take phone calls, reducing the health and environmental costs that kerosene has for use in the home, and even providing the first form of financial services through our integration with mobile banking. We are moving fast and we're launching Rwanda this year with our eyes set on additional countries next year. We are lighting Africa, we are lighting the off-grid world in this decade and the clock has already started ticking. So thank you so much for this incredible honor.